We're here at Kubicon 2018 in Seattle, Washington, and we've stopped by the Platform 9 booth. Can you tell us a little bit about the company and what you're showing here at uh, KubeCon? Absolutely. Uh, I hope everyone's having a great KubeCon. Uh, Platform 9 makes it easy to run hybrid clouds. Uh, it uh, is a SaaS-based management approach to running open source cloud frameworks like Kubernetes and OpenStack uh, that runs on any infrastructure of our enterprise's choice. So we provide a SaaS-based management platform that they can use to transform any existing infrastructure or public cloud environments into a hybrid cloud environment very quickly and easily. So this is a great show of the year for us. Uh, all the container faithful are here. So I'm uh, really excited to be here. Great, and where do you fit into the Kubernetes uh, ecosystem? So we provide, uh, our flagship product is a managed Kubernetes offering that uh, gives you uh, a, uh, an enterprise class Kubernetes platform that just works. So the idea is that you can rely on this to be fully uh, scalable to your needs as you grow your usage of containers at large enterprises. So uh, the idea is that we provide the Kubernetes platform and the support and lifecycle management behind it, and you just need to bring your own infrastructure that you want to manage, whether that is on-premises or the public clouds, and transform that into a platform for cloud-native application development. And what would you say that you, there are the specific like Kubernetes problems that you solve yeah, we're doing a survey at the show. We, we do the survey every year at KubeCon. Last year in Austin, uh, we ran a survey and the results are on our website, but you can see that about 80% of the people at KubeCon in Austin said that they were really concerned about the complexity, the operational complexity of running Kubernetes. And if you talk to the, the people at the show, you'll broadly see two types of companies. You'll see companies that are starting to dabble with Kubernetes and are maybe running small Kubernetes clusters and are starting to experiment with it. But then you see the companies that have really started to run this at scale and have really internalized cloud native as a core way of building next generation applications. And you, if you talk to them, you'll see that one of the key things that they're concerned about is how can they run and support hundreds or thousands of developers that are building a wide range of applications that need to be run on premises or in the public cloud, need to be infrastructure agnostic, need to be cloud agnostic, can't depend excessively on either on-prem infrastructure or any particular public cloud provider. And so that is where we really uh, see a lot of the conversations trending to this year compared to last year. A lot more companies are graduating to that maturity spectrum where they're trying to run containers at scale and they're looking for ways to operationalize cloud native at really large scale in their organizations. And where would you see the industry going over the next 12, 18 months? You know, where do you see what things happening? Yeah, I think there's a fundamental shift that's happening that's away from infrastructure-focused thinking to application and orchestration-centric uh, thinking. So 10 years ago, uh, we used to think about infrastructure. vSphere clusters were how people thought about infrastructure resiliency. Today, the way people think about building highly resilient applications is by ensuring that they're build, being built with cloud-native technologies, with declarative specifications on the, the constructs and resource requirements of those applications uh, in a manner that is cloud agnostic and infrastructure agnostic. So we're seeing really the shift away from infrastructure centric ways of talking about applications and infrastructure to really having the, that intelligence and policy at the application layer. And we think that containers and cloud native is at the core of that transition from infrastructure to application uh, uh, development and that's going to continue. So you're going to see a lot more focus on observability in terms of uh, you know, tracing of, of modern, complex, distributed microservices in terms of service meshes that help you build these microservices and run them on-prem or in a hybrid context or in a multi-cloud context. So we see that being the, the major themes of the next three years. And uh, would it be possible for us to take a look at the product, maybe a demo? Absolutely, let's do a demo. Great, so what are we going to take a look at? So I'm going to show you a live environment running Platform 9 that uh, was, uh, is managing environments uh, from the public cloud to on-premises regions using Kubernetes and cloud-native applications running in Kubernetes. Sounds great. The idea here is that uh, this is a Kubernetes dashboard, as I showed you. Um, this is a live environment. You can see uh, it's running. You can choose to manage many different environments with a single pane with Platform 9. There's Azure environments, Google Cloud environments, 
on-prem and VMware or KVM environments that you can manage. And obviously, you probably know well, we have a comprehensive uh, OpenStack product that you're probably well aware of. Uh, let's focus on Kubernetes for this demo. The idea is that you can bring your on-prem nodes or register public cloud providers, and you can deploy clusters very easily using the, the Platform 9 management plane. And those nodes are running, in this case, there's three clusters that are running, one cluster running on-prem, one cluster running on Amazon Web Services, another cluster running on Azure, and I'll show you how easy it is to provision a new cluster. So I'm going to go and use an Amazon credentials that I have. I'm going to call this a demo cluster. Uh, let's use one of the, the Amazon regions. I'm going to say use the US East 2 region. Here's the three uh, availability zones that we found in that region that we're going to use. So we have a multi-master Kubernetes cluster. And uh, let's use Ubuntu as the guest OS. Now, I'm just going to choose the, the configuration that I want for my, my masters, the Kubernetes masters, and then the Kubernetes workers. Um, and I'm going to choose three masters so I have a highly available Kubernetes cluster. And then I'm going to choose, say, 80 workers. I'm not actually going to provision this node, this cluster, but you get the idea of how simple it is to provision a cluster. One really cool feature that we have is uh, you, can, uh, you can just specify that you want to run a certain portion of the cluster using spot instances uh, and set a price. So for example, you're saying, of these 80 workers, because I want to save cloud costs, run 65% of it, or about 53 workers, using spot pricing, which is cheaper. And for a C3 4x large worker node on that, zone, on that Amazon region, we're willing to pay up to this price per VM hour. So Platform 9's managed Kubernetes product will automatically ensure that uh, if the price of spot workers is below 98 cents, it'll procure from the spot market uh, but up to 53 worker nodes uh, coming from the spot market. But when, if and when price exceeds that, then your worker nodes are actually coming from your reserved or on-demand uh, instances. So I'm not actually going to complete the screen, but you get the idea that with just a few clicks, you can deploy a new cluster. So let me show you how easy it is. Once you have your clusters provisioned, you can perform all of the Kubernetes operations, including provide access to your developers uh, using Kubernetes role-based access control. And these could be coming from your Active Directory or single sign-on mechanism. Uh, and uh, people who are familiar with Kubernetes will recognize kubectl. Kubectl is a standard way of accessing and op performing operations on Kubernetes. And here's how I was able to get in. The system authorized me, uh, validated that I was a known user, and that I had access to be able to go launch kubectl on this cluster. And I've been able to just get access to the Kubernetes command line in this cluster. So that's a super quick overview of how Platform 9's managed Kubernetes product makes this easy to, to run and scale multi-cluster, enterprise-scale Kubernetes as a platform for microservices and cloud native in your organization. Great. Well, thanks for taking the time to speak with VM Blog. I'm very happy to have been here. Thank you for having me.